Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. I'm obviously uh, beyond fired up to, to be back. Uh, you guys are well aware that I was here in 2019, so to know that I've got the opportunity and a greater role to be a part of a program like LSU and a program that's capable of doing the things that we did in 2019 and an offense that was capable or is capable of doing what we were able to accomplish, then it's, um, you know, it's obviously an opportunity that I, I couldn't say no to, and I'm, I'm just beyond excited to be here. Yeah, well, obviously, I've got some insight there just being here in 2019. And, and I know Jake leaned on a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people that have been involved in this process. But uh, there, there was communication between the two of us. And, and I had, as you can imagine, nothing but great things to say, um, you know, about this place and this program and, and the people that are here. So, um, you know, there was definitely conversation. I know uh, between him and I, there was obviously conversation with Joe as well. So, uh, you know, I leaned on him as well, you know, just uh, thinking about different things going into it. But, uh, yeah, it was, there was constant communication throughout the process. Hey, DJ. Hey, Brody Miller with The Athletic. I mean, you know, you were obviously an OC at 28 years old, and maybe that didn't go to plan. But I guess what did you kind of learn from that two-year experience and kind of, you know, three years later to be here? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I think uh, sometimes in, in a lot of cases you can learn from some of the hard times more than you can learn from the good times. And, and it's kind of crazy to look back and think on, uh, you know, maybe it didn't necessarily go as planned, but to walk into an opportunity where I was able to be a part of that at William and & Mary. And, um, and, and obviously there was a lot of good that came from that experience. And then walk into LSU where you're part of one of the greatest, arguably the greatest offense that college football has ever seen in a 15-0 and team. And to be able to see what it takes uh, to be – playing at that level as an offense and as a team, and then to go to the NFL and to be able to experience that at the highest level. Um, you know, there was just a lot that was learned in that time to see what it takes to be that good. Um, so those were clearly the biggest takeaways for me that have prepared me to, for this opportunity and, and to be back here at LSU. Hey, DJ, uh, Jacques Gise, WAFB-TV here in Baton Rouge. Uh, just curious. Uh, I guess none of us know what spring football is going to look like or what it's going to be, but, but how anxious and how excited are, are you and Jake to, to do some things in spring and just, I guess, in a broad sense, what do you want to accomplish in spring football? Yeah, no, I'm fired up. I mean, it, it's one day at a time here. Um, you know, obviously I'm looking to, to get on the field with these guys uh, and get the ball rolling in that sense. But as Jake touched on, it's, it's relationships. It's building those relationships with the staff and the players leading up to that. So... You know, my focus is there right now and getting to know the players because there's, you know, even though I was here just, you know, a little over a year ago or less than a year ago, there's, there's still a lot of guys that uh, were young or that we recruited that are now part of the roster that uh, I'm looking forward to getting to know better, um, you know, and, and learning and, uh, and getting to know them from that aspect so we can figure out what they're capable of on the field and, and putting them in position to succeed. here as an analyst in, in Baton Rouge and then working with Joe Brady again, Carolina, you know, now that you're the passing game coordinator here, what are the things that you're, you're kind of taking from those past experiences now, now that you're in this role? What do, you, what do you feel like you get to do now that you're in this position? Yeah, I think what Joe and, and Steve were able to do in 2019 was maximize the talent that we had. The, the talent is always here at LSU. And I think with Joe and just observing it and being around it and, and being a part of it, that's the biggest thing, putting your players in position to succeed, you know, using the whole field from sideline to sideline, making all 11 defenders defend the field, and, and then putting your players in position to succeed, like I said, taking what the defense gives you uh, and maximizing the talent you have, keeping it simple, but applying pressure on the defense at the same time. So. Between that uh, at LSU in 2019 and this year with the Panthers, I think uh, that that's the biggest takeaway for me. And, and that's what I look forward to doing with Jake and, and the rest of the staff and the offense that we have right now. Hey, DJ, Michael Cabo from uh, Channel 2 here in Baton Rouge. Good to see you back in the Red Stick. Um, lots of questions. I, I don't really know where to start. But um, the one that intrigues me the most is just William and Mary. You know, 
I've seen that campus. I've been to Williamsburg. Just how were you all able to, I guess, get this ball rolling, uh, take college football by storm last year, and, and now continue this evolution of, of where the offenses are kind of moving in college football? What, what was the genesis of all this? Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at William & Mary, Mike Tomlin, Sean McDermott, amongst others, it's it's got a pretty rich tradition of, uh, of coaches out there that are doing really well. Um, so I, I just think uh, the, the combination of, uh, unfortunately, I wasn't good enough to necessarily, I wasn't talented enough to keep playing, but the passion was always there. And to go to William & Mary, you, you kind of have to be pretty smart. So I think when you combine the, the, the smarts with the willingness to work and the passion for the game, I think uh, you can see that with Joe Brady, and, and hopefully you can see that with me. Uh, and, and that should take you places. And, and usually, uh, you know, you, you walk away from William & Mary, you see a lot of people, the graduates, the intangibles that those people possess. Uh, a lot of them apply to, to doing well in life and doing well as a coach. So uh, I, I think those things have carried over. And you, you just take it one day at a time, one job at a time. And, um, you know, and, and that usually adds up and, and leads you to, to good places and great places like LSU, uh, um, you know, that I'm obviously excited to be a part of. Hey, DJ, this is uh, Glenn West with LSU Country. Um, you know, traditionally, you know, the last couple of years, the, the passing game coordinators kind of handled third down and red zone here. Uh, I'm just curious, you know, over the last couple of years, what you've been able to learn about, you know, what it takes to be most efficient in the red zone and, and also on third down. Yeah, well, I think on third down, you have to be able to protect first. You know, I we can come up with the best concepts in the world, but if you can't protect and give your quarterback time to throw the ball, it, it's irrelevant. So I, I think it starts there with having a great protection plan. And then obviously the concepts, putting your players again, like I said, in position to succeed based upon what the defense has given you, based upon, upon what their, you know, their trends and their tendencies are, those types of things. And then in the red zone, it, it's the same type of thing, just having a plan, preparing, uh, and putting the work in and, and figuring out what the defense likes to do down there. And, and again, just, just putting your players in position to succeed uh, when it comes down there. You got to get a little creative and, um, uh, you know, uh, look into it maybe a little bit more than you would in your, your base down, your core plan to, uh, I think, to do well down there. DJ uh, Scott Rabelais, also with the Advocate. Um, as you as you well know from from your your college experience, it's not just about the teams; it's about players. So, it's a, you're leaving the NFL where it's all football, and, and here it's at least half the battle is, is recruiting. Just talk about you know re recruiting, the importance of it. What what, what you, do you have a philosophy? What kind of players you'll be looking for? That sort of thing. Yeah, I mean you can see it as a battle. I I think of it. You know, Jake and I were talking yesterday about how rewarding it can be. You know, getting to know the families, the parents, the players. Uh, in developing that relationship and seeing them grow as men, 18 to 22 year olds. Obviously, there's a lot of growing they have to do, not just on the field, but off the field. So uh, I think just looking for high character players, uh, you know, beyond the talent is, is first and foremost in, in the type of families and the background that they come from uh, that can help build this program and help help this program win. And then obviously you want to seek players that are playmakers and, and are, uh, you know, looking to make plays and possess the talent as well. But uh, in, in my mind, it's, uh, it's those types of things, the intangibles. Uh, I think that's where you start, um, and that's how you build um, you know, a great offense as well. Uh, hey, Coach, this is Shea Dixon with 24-7. Um, welcome back. Congrats. I, uh, Appreciate it. I was curious, you had been in college for so long, obviously, that spending a year in the NFL, what's the kind of biggest thing you learned, whether it's for how you adjust coaching the players or how you adjust going about you know being a coach and your weekly schedule what, what kind of jumped out at you about um, well yeah well I, I think my time at William and Mary and, and obviously LSU prepared me pretty well I mean you're dealing with a lot of guys that uh, you're coaching the type of talent that is going to be seen in the NFL so so really it wasn't as much of an adjustment on that end coaching those types of players in the NFL you know as we just talked about the recruiting um, you know, uh, class checks, those types of things, it, you know, you obviously don't have to worry about at that level. But um, it really, I felt very prepared being in Carolina with the Panthers because of my time here at LSU. Hey, Coach, this is Jake Sibley with Louisiana Gridiron Football. Um, Coach Peach kind of uh, mentioned uh, speaking face-to-face uh, -to, -face to, to players. 
Um, and you, you kind of touched on recruiting earlier. Uh, have you spoken to any players that might have opted out uh, earlier in this season or might be on the bubble um, uh, uh, about leaving um, uh, for next season? Yeah, I, I'm just concerned with the players that are here right right now, right here, right now. Those are the guys that I've I've talked to, and I'm I'm looking forward to getting to know, and and that's where my focus is. Okay, thanks, Coach. Hey, Coach. Uh, DJ, first Dan from the Advocate. Um, you mentioned third downs a little bit earlier. There, um, asked Jake about this earlier. It, it seems like with any scheme, it, a lot of it comes down to in-game adjustments in in the game. You were obviously a part of that in '19. How, how have you and Jake kind of talked about organizing that? You told you talked a little bit about how that's part of the plan as well, um, uh, the preparation before games. Uh, what is kind of the strategy there? Well, I think you have to know your answers ahead of time. You know, you, it's it's the preparation right now that adds up during the season. Uh, you know, if you're you're preparing for something going into a game, and if you guys remember in 2019, I mean, the first half of the season or excuse me, the second half of the season, it was like we saw some defenses I don't know that anybody's seen before. Um, so it's just you have a core set of, uh, of your offense, and, and you lean on that. And when you see something maybe you, you haven't anticipated, uh, you know your answers already because you've prepared. You've prepared in the off season, You've prepared in the summer, and, and the players know it, and you can go to those things. So to me, it just comes down to preparation and, and knowing your answers. Awesome. That's all we got time for. Appreciate it. Appreciate you guys. Good to be back. Go Tigers.